Well, the contrast between being a really very much an urban person coming from the busy city of Sydney and going into this expansive, uh, spacious place um, was quite extraordinary. It felt quite a shock in the beginning. It took me a few days to kind of um, feel my feet, if you like. Some of the challenges, that um, physical challenges that I experienced were being in those big open spaces where at times I felt quite alone, um, one or two times when, particularly at night, uh, when I was walking around in the darkness and um, sometimes in places like the salt lakes at night with, with the water on top of the salt lakes, it I, I felt both, both uh, it was magical and at the same time quite dangerous. Hi, my name is Anne Brannis and I'm the Community Development Officer at the Shire of Muckangudan. Hi, I'm Matt. I'm 12 years old and I was one of the students who went and visited Julia Davis's art gallery. Um, I thought she was quite a tall, elegant lady. Okay. And, and, and not an artist look, arty looking person at all. Okay. Yeah, I'd say the same. She was really tall and, like, I thought she was a bit English and she was very good with, like, when the school came, she explained it that way, way that younger kids would understand as well. When Julia came to Muck and Boot and just, we um, had to house her, of course, and I'll just backtrack a bit, and she was the only suitable um, place that we had to put her for a long-term period was in a old age unit in just opposite the Shah building and we furnished it for her and she was surrounded by all these lovely old ladies and they she called them her mother and she got right into our community you know she came to football and she socialized certainly i formed a lot of friendships that i would never have formed um, otherwise and um, sometimes i get phone calls in sydney from people in muck and Boodin to say that they're coming to sydney or um, i know that if i went back there I'd have a place to stay. So, um, and if I went back there to do any other other projects, I know there would be a huge amount of support. The way I like to work is in an ephemeral way, and this landscape exfoliates before your eyes. There are granite formations there that are just shelling off through the sheer, through the weather, and um, everybody talks about the weather. Everybody talks about the way things exfoliate there and the way things change with the weather. All the farmers talk about the weather all the time. And so um, it seemed a really obvious thing for me to do, to make a work that would exfoliate and weather and change according to its surroundings. The placing of the salt head, the casting of the salt head from the salt in Lake Brown into the exact spot where I harvested the salt from uh, was really a way of thinking through the place and the place where I was and the history of the place. This salt lake was the first place that the, the early settlers, the first settlers and explorers came to and I was reading some of the writings about this place they were describing it as appearing like a white sheet in the landscape and um, the, the making of that work, as with all my work, is a way of thinking through the ideas. Um, or having an intimate conversation, I guess, with the, with the place that um, I found myself in. And how Those did you... lakes are full, we go like knee boarding and take our boats out there and jet skis and everything. And we have picnics out there and camp outs when it's not full. And we just, um, we sometimes go play cricket on it and then we'll um, walk, see how far we can walk out and have mud fights and all this stuff. And where the, where the head was actually placed into the lake, Julia went out at different times of the day and there's some wonderful photos at night, you know, of it just shimmering and it looks like the head's almost Sunk, like the body has sunk into the lake and there's just the um, shoulders and the head 
it's just it was very amazing and she kept a blog you know and then um, I think we put it in the Mucka Matters which is a local um, rag or lo little local newspaper so people could log on and follow what she was doing and her comments about us was interesting you know how she viewed Muck and Boonal, how she saw the Salt Lake you know to see your surroundings through it, the eyes of a stranger is really amazing. I became really interested in the idea of working um, just the, the human endeavour that goes into a place in order for people to survive and uh, the idea of me going out every day working, taking photographs, digging in the salt, um, recording people's waves as they pass by, all of those things became a way for me to form some kind of intimacy with the, both the community and the place. The hand-waving project just happened. I had no idea where it was going to go, or if it was going to go anywhere. It reflected this sense of intimacy that I don't feel in the city. In the city, it's, it's quite different. I don't know half of my neighbours. And I wouldn't know if somebody moved out next door and somebody else moved in until maybe six months later. And did you... Roderick was in town at the time. He was back on the farm. And so he would take her around and take her out um, at his farm and stuff and on her journeys around the um, place she noticed that we're all waving and she couldn't believe the different styles of waves you know some would wave and some would just raise their fingers and stuff so yeah she um, thought that that would be an excellent project to explore and bailed everybody up that she could to wave at her. Are you in it? Yes I am in it yeah. So you're waving? Yes you're I'm waving. waving. Yeah. Do, you, um, do you wave at other drivers? Yeah, sometimes. Uh, only if I know them really. We, I know that mum and dad normally stop waving around training just on our way to Perth. And that's when we just stop socialising because they're the only people we really know.